Let's talk about this new model from American Blade Works, the Model 2 Titanium. Now, a lot of changes have been made, even more than just the sheep's foot blade shape. So, who's making them and where are they made? These knives are made proudly in the USA by Michael Martin. Every part aside from the screws and the bearings are machined in North Carolina by Michael Martin. Let's talk about the blade. So the blade, it is a sheep's foot blade machined out of magna cut steel heat treated to 63 to 64 HRC. Now, if you watched our cut test, we recently did a cut test cutting doing a cut test with magna cut steel around the same HRC between 63 and 64. And it cut around 750 feet of cardboard in a one inch section doing push cuts. Now that's a whole lot of cutting, especially if you consider using the entire blade not doing push cuts. Now this one has incredible geometry. It is very thin behind the edge and its blade is just machined so nicely you can tell this thing was made to cut. Not only is it very utilitarian and it's going to be great for using utility cuts, but its geometry will pass through materials extremely easy. It's a dream to use this knife. It is not only very comfortable in the hand, but it passes through materials very, very nicely. Now let's talk about the handle and scales. So the handle is made of machined titanium with incredible micro milling. I'd love to see more knives with this kind of machining. It's got a tactile yet very soft feel to the touch. So, so it's grippy yet nice and smooth. So, so it is pretty unique. Now, because it runs the direction it does, the pocket clip is extremely smooth in and out of the pocket. This is definitely a clip you will never have to worry about shredding any of your pockets. So very, very well done pocket clip. Then you have a geared titanium backspacer that is going to give you a little bit more traction inside the hand. The ergonomics are really, really good. It perfectly fits in my hand and you can always choke up to the trigger pull right on the flipper tab. Now the hardware is machined out of 416 stainless steel and then it has inset stainless steel liners that are 17-4 pH stainless steel. They give you a nice good cutout to get to the lock bar for very comfortable disengagement. And you can see the steel liners are nestled and inset into the titanium. How's the action? Let's talk about this action. So we already talked about the lock bar cutout. It's very smooth, very easy to disengage, and it is very smooth on the drop. It is running on ceramic caged bearings, which make it incredibly smooth. I can feel the detent ball still breaking into this machined finish, but it's breaking in very quickly and it is very, very smooth. Now, I really, really like the sound of this knife. It has a real shaklunk sound to it. We're going to listen to that here right now. But the flipper tab has a nice comfortable placement for your finger, well jimped, not sharp jimping, but also just enough traction to do a nice light switch. However, you can also bear down and do a rapid push button, push button action because it's rounded and very soft. Everything on this knife is very refined and very soft. I tend to prefer the light switch a little bit more. and it snaps out there with authority. Now I will say the detent is probably on the lighter side for most people. I can easily fail it, but with any intention at all, it's gonna snap out there. And even though it is on the lighter side, it's still very satisfying to me. And if I wanted to increase the, the detent just a little bit more, I've gotten, I have plenty of videos teaching how to tune a detent and how to strengthen a detent. So I could easily do that myself but like I said, it has a nice satisfying snap to it, even though it is a little bit on the lighter side. So I might or might not wind up tuning the lock bar to be a little bit stronger because it is on the lighter side. So the blade sticks out just enough and the detent is just light enough 
for me to reverse flick off of the blade pretty easily. So let's talk about some negatives, the negatives. So one negative is the detent is a little bit on the later side and it's not horrible, but it has a ramp. So I wish it didn't have a ramp. Now I can easily get past it. So I don't want to complain about it too much. It's a very, very tiny nitpick because I can easily get past it. If I couldn't get past it, then it would be a complaint, but it's just, it hits the detent right there and then you still have to get past that ramp. I would say if your detent is that late, don't even put a ramp because then all I gotta do is get past that and it'll jump right onto the blade. Put a, I, I prefer a ramp if it's very early. Like if the detent is very early because then it has time to get past the ramp. So you're not doing this. You know, even though this one's still easy to do. The next negative thing, which is the the biggest thing for me. It, and we already spoke about the detent being a little bit lighter, so possibly this could go away if I tuned it. Now, I was trying to let it break in, and I have flipped it a lot of times. And I have no doubt that Michael Martin won't take care of this. But it is failing, and very easily. Like, I'm not going to sit here and fail it, but I can... Oop, there it goes. So I can easily fail it without even trying. So that's not good, that's not safe, um, and it even happens if I put pressure on the spine. I can easily do it right here like this. So I, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna try, I don't wanna attempt to cut myself, but I can easily do it. So I, I figured the, the lock just needed to break in, which is normal, let me be clear. When you get a knife, if you feel a little tiny bit of rock, or maybe if it slips, flip it a, a thousand times, like let it break in. But in this case, I have given it time to break in and it's still slipping. So maybe increasing the tension of the lock bar might help that, or maybe it just needs to be tuned a little bit. And I, like I said, I have no doubt that Michael Martin wouldn't take care of that. I've heard his warranty service is incredible. So like I said, I have no doubt. And that's my biggest thing. It's not about like if I have an issue, issues happen, things happen. It's what the maker does about it. So all in all, it's an amazing USA made knife. And I got to add one little thing that I really appreciate about it. Not only the machining and the insane geometry, the well heat treated steel. I haven't tested the steel, but I assume, you know, being 63 to 64, that's probably a good heat treat um, because he cared enough about getting the right HRC. But if you look, the blade has a little tiny, it's such a small amount, you might not be able to pick it up, but I can pick it up. It's got a little tiny, tiny bit of curve. It's so slightly that you would never even notice it, not even on a stone. So I can sharpen this just like a regular worn clip. However, that tiny, 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 tiny amount of curve actually increases this cutting performance. Like not only is it like a claw when using it for utility cuts, but it actually slightly traps materials. So I love the way this blade shape was done, whether it was intentional or not, I love it. Now I will say, if it wasn't intentional, you could easily sharpen it out. You know, it would take two seconds to, not two seconds, it'd take a few minutes to sharpen it out and flatten it back out to make it a perfectly straight edge. But I'll be honest, I actually like the way it is on this. Now, the one other little tiny negative I have is just the sharpening tool and plunge grind. We already knew that was going to happen. So sharpening tool and plunge grind, I wish there was a bigger notch right there, a little bit deeper because it is, um, it, it will create a smile. Now, I have all the room in the world to cut in my own choil in the future, so it's not that big of a deal. I can easily notch it out. Even though it's very thin behind the edge, it's still going to hit the plunge grind. But like I said, I can easily just notch it out with a Dremel or a diamond file. Really quick, I want to compare it to my other American Blade Works that I absolutely adore. Not only does it also have that same, well not the same machining, but similar machining that's nice and tactile. I love this machining. It's so comfortable in the hand. This one's got pretty solid lockup. I feel a little bit of lash in the pivot, but it's not the lock. The lock is nice and strong. Um, very snappy detent. I love the detent on this one. It's very smooth on the drop. 
And it's just, it's an incredible American made knife. I love all the work and the machining. And these are relatively affordable knives for what you're getting, considering it's USA made, titanium, premium materials, good heat treat. So they, this one runs, I think about 329. And he just recently dropped some yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't have this up yesterday when they dropped, because they did drop yesterday. I believe they are sold out now, but. The, um, he, I think he makes them like every other week or between every week and every other week, he does another drop. So there it's going to be obtainable. It's going to be easy to get. And at this price, it's such a good price. So the next thing is, I think he's going to be at blade show. So if you're wanting to get one, go and check his booth out. If he's going to blade, show. I'm pretty sure he is. I'll put it up on the screen if that's a yes or a no, but all in all, there you guys go until next time. Peace.